Chris Barker, I'm the Head of Maths here at Brianley School. I've been teaching now for nine years and we've been uh, an NXL Maths Hub for about three or four years. One of the biggest challenges that we faced was that the students that were being uh, put onto the new GCC hadn't done the Key Stage 3 that we would need them to do to do that. Um, so there were skills that we would have had them do lower down in school, would, a lot more emphasis on problem solving would have done lower down in school. Um, and they, they were going into this without all those prerequisite skills. We were really fortunate because we got given some extra hours on the timetable for years 10 and 11, which meant that we could plug in some of the gaps, um, such as Venn diagrams, that they would have ideally done in Key Stage 3, um, but didn't have that time to do that. Um, we also uh, had a big uh, push on problem solving skills. We changed uh, the skimmer work massively for Key Stage 3, so we took a lot of content out um, because we felt that there was a more of a, a depth needed of understanding, so we wanted them to understand fewer topics but in, in more depth. Problem solving was a big deal for us um, and still remains an area that we're keen to do a lot more work on. Um, what we were really keen to do was to do problem solving outside of when they'd actually been taught it. So if we were doing Venn diagrams, we would give them problem solving with Venn diagrams, but we wouldn't assume that was enough for them to identify when a Venn diagram could be used. So we'd give them some problem solving questions at a later date, um, but not tell them what skill was needed to try and get them used to identifying, ah, this is a question where I need to use Venn diagrams. This is a question where I need to use Pythagoras. Quite a lot of the resources that we use are from Twitter and we've got quite a few of the department who are really into getting ideas and, and resources from Twitter. Uh, we also bought the Pearson Edexcel textbooks, which was really helpful, especially in that first year, because with some of the topics that were new to the specification, we didn't know how challenging to make it. So things like uh, area under a curve, it wasn't clear to us whether we were going quite as far as calculus that we'd do in the sixth form or, or quite how far to pitch it, so that really helped us clarify exactly what the expectation was. The support that we've had from Edexcel has been really good, so a lot of the ideas that we got were from the hub itself. Um, so things like the problem solving papers, the bronze, silver, gold papers, they've been really useful, especially with the new content to the GCSE, because we got given quite a, a lot of resources uh, for skills that we'd not taught before, which was really helpful. We have a mock in year 10, which is formal, and we do all three papers, and we give them a list of targets um, based on that. They do a second mock in November of year 11 uh, and the same process happened, they'll get a list of targets that they need to work on uh, and then since we had the new GCC we've also done an extra mock in March just to give them that extra chance um, because they respond well to that formality, they, they take it seriously when it's in that formal setting. They were the, the LXL mock papers and we liked the, the fact that they were secure, that new secure mock service um, has been really useful for us. Deciding what tier to enter was really different from previous years um, because it used to be really clear cut. We had higher in foundation and we knew exactly from early on in year 10 who was going to be higher, who was going to be foundation uh, and that changed massively for the new specification. Uh, so we had 10 sets in the year group. Um, for eight of those sets it was very clear these students are higher, these students are foundation uh, and we had two sets in the middle and we, for a, a large portion of the GCC, were really confused as to what tier to enter them for. Um, so we were using things like the crossover papers that Edexcel provided um, and su uh, support from other schools and the hubs as to what they were doing for those students who it wasn't clear what tier to sit um, to help us make our mind up. The final assessments I think seemed fair. Um, because it was the new spec we didn't know how challenging things were going to be um, and I think we prepared the students for something harder than we actually ended up with. We were really pleased with the final results. Um, our grade uh, fours and above versus our previous year's grade C's and above had gone up nearly 10%, uh, which we were made up with. Uh, I think one of the reasons for that is that we changed setting structure. So that was the first year where we didn't have a bottom set in that year group. Uh, instead we had four parallel foundation groups uh, and it just meant that those four sets were all being taught the full foundation tier specification um, and they weren't necessarily being limited by being a bottom set. Um, and I do think that's a big factor in how we got um, a lot more students over that grade four threshold than we've had the previous year. But no, the grades four and above, and the grade nines in particular, we were really pleased with.
we do get a lot of support and the help from Edexcel, which we do find really valuable, and that's one of the reasons um, why we stay with them each year. Um, so being a hub school, we get a lot of support, we get a lot of ideas, um, not just from Edexcel themselves, but the network of teachers as well as part of that. Um, but Edexcel have given us lots of resources, lots of support through the, the transition on this GCC, which we found really useful. Um, we like the styles of questions, we like the layout of the papers, um, students know what they're expecting with those sorts of questions. Um, but I think the main factor for us has been the, the support element that we've received from the board. That's been really helpful. Mm -hmm.